Hi, Educator Barnes here, and today I want to talk to you about the book The House You Pass on Away by Jacqueline Woodson. This book centered around main character Stagger Lee, a biracial girl growing up in a mostly black town, and she's just trying to figure out who she is. This book touches on a lot of issues such as race, sexuality, and finding yourself, and learning how to live in that person who you believe you are, even though other people may not accept you. So without further ado, I want to read chapter 2 from the house she passed on the way. She had kissed a girl once, in sixth grade, Hazel. She didn't remember how she and Hazel started being friends. Hazel showed up to school late in the year, and somehow they had just started hanging together. Hazel's mother made all her clothes and didn't allow her to wear anything but dresses that stopped right below her knees. All her dresses were pastel, even in the winter. She would show up to school in pale green and blue dresses with huge sashes tied in the back. The dresses made her look young and old at the same time. Her hair was thick and coiling, but her mother made her wear it pulled back into a tight braid. At school, Hazel undid her braid and let her hair go wild. She had a way of laughing that made Stagger Lee feel safe, warm and safe. They had kissed after school one day behind a patch of blue cornflowers. Soon after, Stagger Lee came down with the chicken pox. She ended up staying home from school for a week. She didn't mind that Hazel didn't come visit. Their house was far away from everyone and hard to get to. When she returned to school, Hazel was huddled in the schoolyard with a group of girls. Stagger Lee walked towards them slowly, knowing something terrible was about to happen. They were whispering, but as she got closer, they stopped, and Hazel turned slowly, her lavender old lady dress spinning out from under her. Stagger Lee touched her finger to her lips, wanting Hazel to remember the way the cornflowers had swayed, the way the sun set down all gold and pretty that afternoon, wanting her to remember how she had said, I could stay here forever, just me and you, right here in all of this blue. But when Hazel turned to her, her eyes were blank, unfamiliar, a stranger's eyes. Your grandparents was killed by a bomb? She asked, her eyes slitted. Those Canaan's they got the statues of, up in town, those were your people? Were, Stagger Lee said. Before I was born, they were my grandparents, but I didn't know them. Behind Hazel, the other girls looked on, their lips hard across their faces. You never told me that, Stag, she said, her voice all full of hurt. All these things I'm hearing now that you never told me. It's nothing, Hazel. Doesn't have anything to do with me. This is me, the person you see standing here. I didn't even know them. Someone giggled. <laughs> That's because they died, one of the girls, a girl named Chloe said. And they must have left y'all lots of money and everything. That's why you think you better than everybody else, because of your grand people. That's why y'all live way out like y'all do, and you think you too cute to talk to anybody. I don't think I'm better or cute. Hazel, you know that. You didn't tell me. You made me believe you were just regular, like all of us, but you ain't. They stared at each other for a long time that afternoon. Nestled down in the cornflowers, Hazel had put her hand on Stagger Lee's cheek and said, You're beautiful, Stagger Lee, inside and out. I wish I was beautiful inside and out like you. Stagger Lee swallowed. She should have told Hazel then that she thought she was beautiful too. All the things she should have said to Hazel came rushing to her at once. Plus, she got a white mama, Hazel. I bet she didn't tell you that either, another girl said. A light-skinned girl everyone called Bug because of her small head and big dark eyes. Stagger Lee glared at her. Her father had said African Americans were all mixed up. Not just the out-and-out mixed-race kids, but that all black people weren't 100% African unless they never left Africa. He said most likely even the darkest black had some white blood somewhere in their veins. And the lighter ones, well, unless they were albino Africans, then they had some too. And her mama thinks that she's better than everyone, too, just because she's white, Bug continued. You don't even know my mother, Stagger Lee whispered, feeling herself turning to stone. She wanted to disappear, 
to melt into the ground and be gone. Everyone knows your mama. It's only three, four white women in all the sweet gum, and only one of them is married to your daddy. Mama see her in town, say she don't hardly speak to people. All these years she been in sweet gum. Nobody needs y'all. She, she doesn't speak to people because that's her way, Staggerly said, hating her mother. How quiet and inside herself she was in public. She had never seen, she had never been like Daddy, who seemed to know everyone in town. He was full of good mornings and what you know good, grinning and slapping men on the back, winking and tipping his hat to the women. Well, nobody needs her way. Just rude and stuck up, Chloe said. Your whole family thinks they so cute. Bugs right, nobody needs y'all. Staggerly swallowed. How about you, Hazel? Hazel glanced away from her. When she looked back, her eyes were cold. No, she said, turning back to the group. I don't need you. Staggerly blinked, her eyes burning. But she wasn't going to cry. Not in front of them. That's an excerpt from The House You Pass On Away by Jacqueline Woodson. Hopefully, I read enough to uh, make you think about um, purchasing a copy of this book or checking it out at your local library. Happy reading. Until next time.